Hi, I'm Luca Congelo and you're watching from JS to Remote Sensing. I'm very pleased to present you the new version 7 of the semi-automatic classification plugin for QJS. This new version is the result of a long development which has new tools and in particular the support for multi-training. So let's have a look at the new interface. So this is the interface of the semi-automatic classification plugin for QJS version 7. Here we have the news panel where you can access the news about the plugin, new tutorials and so on. This is the training input panel where we are going to store the region of interest and the spectral signatures. This is the ROI options panel for options about ROI creation. And these are buttons to the main tools of the plugin. And of course there is the SCP menu here where you can access all the tools of the plugin. You can see here the menu, the basic tools, the download products. I suggest to go to the settings menu, processing setting, and first uh, set the available RAM and the number of CPU threads in order to speed up the processes and speed up the calculation. You can also access the main tools from this left menu here, from this uh, tree menu and you can access all the tools with a click. And of course, the main tool of the band set. This is the working toolbar with the, the tools about the image, RGB, the region of interest, and the classification preview. So the first step is to download the Sentinel-2 images. So from the SCP menu, select Download Products. This is the window, the interface of the plugin. Here we can define the search parameters, the coordinates. But first I suggest you to set here the user and password of the required service for download, in particular the Sciab Copernicus service for downloading Sentinel-2 images. So here we click this button, OSM, to add the OpenStreetMap to QJS here. This is the map that we can use for reference for selecting the area, the search area. Here we can zoom to the south of Italy or over the city of Matera. And here we can set the coordinates of the search area. This is the city of Matera. And here we can set the coordinates of the search area. We can define the coordinates manually or by clicking this button here. And then in the map, left click to define the upper left corner and right click to define the lower right corner. Here you can see the coordinates, the upper left and lower right longitude and latitude. But here for this tutorial, we can also set the coordinates manually more precisely here. If we click show, we can see here the defined search area. Then we come back to the interface. Now we can select the product to download here. This is the list of products that SCP can download. We are going to select Sentinel-2 images for this tutorial. And then we define the range of dates, for, of acquisition dates. In this tutorial we are going to set a precise date, the 8th of July 2020. I selected this date because uh, there is a very low cloud cover, but of course you can select any other date. Then you click Find. After a few seconds we have the search result. Here in the product list each item is an image, a Sentinel-2 image. Here we have two Sentinel-2 level 2A and two level 1C images. If we click on an item, we can see here the preview of the image. Here, this is the preview of the other image. 
we're going to use the first the first item here and then we click this button to display a preview directly in the QGIS map here we we'll click as you can see a temporary file this previews has been added to QGIS of course this is a low resolution image we can see here the extent of the image and for instance if there is a cloud cover then we can go to download options Here we can define the bands to be downloaded. In particular, we are going to uncheck here band 1, band 9 and band 10 because of the very low spatial resolution and spectral characteristics are not uh, useful for land cover classification. So we come back here to the product list. We can see here this option only if previewing layers. This should be checked in order to download only the images that are added to QJS map. Otherwise, all the products in the product list will be downloaded. We uncheck these option preprocess images because we're going to preprocess the images later. And then we click run. We click run and we select the output directory here. And so the download process has started. As you can see here, the message bar with the download progress. So we should wait until the download process has completed. So here we have all the downloaded bands here. You can see in the list. We can remove the preview of the image because we don't need, of course. Remove layer and OK. So these are the bands. We can see some of them. So now we are going to clip the bands, all the bands at once, to our steady area. Here in the SCP menu, for processing, clip multiple rasters. Here we can clip all these bands at once. So here we can clip all the bands that we are defining in the band set. The band set is defined here in this tool, band set. We click this button to refresh the list of single bands loaded in QJS. We select them all with this button. And then we click this plus button to add all the selected bands to the band set one. Here you can see the list of bands in bandset1. We can order automatically the bandset by name here, the bandset number. And then we can also set the web length, the center web length, uh, very quickly with this menu here. We select Sentinel 2. So now that we have defined the first bandset, We can come back to the tool clip multiple rasters here. And then we can define the clip coordinates. Of course, we could also use a vector file for clipping. So first we are going to set the coordinate reference system of the QJS project as the same as the image here. Then we can use this button as we have done previously with the download products. With a left click, we define the upper left corner and the right click, the lower right corner of the clipping coordinates. So here we have the coordinates. Of course, we can also enter manually these coordinates to be more precise in the clipping process. And here, this is the clipping area, defined with this uh, red uh, rectangle. Now we can click Run and select the output directory, where we are going to save the clipped bands. And here you can see the clipping process running in the message bar. You can see here the clipped bands with the prefix clip here that we are going to use later.
So now we can uh, pre-process the data. And in particular, we have downloaded the Sentinel-2 bands. So we go in the SCP menu to pre-processing Sentinel-2. Here we can see the tool. We have some options here. First, we must select the directory containing the Sentinel-2 bands. So here we select the directory of clipped bands, but of course we could also select the directory for converting all the original bands. After selecting the directory, you can see here the list of bands. We don't check these options apply as one correction because these are uh, level 2A uh, Sentinel-2 images. These are already atmospherically corrected images. We also uncheck this option create bandset and use bandset tools because it is an advanced option that we are not going to use in this tutorial. And then we click run. And the conversion process, uh, actually a conversion of digital number to decimal value of reflectance, started. Here you can see the converted bands with the prefix RT. Here, these are all the converted bands. And of course, we can select and remove uh, the other original bands because we don't need them for this tutorial. So now that we have downloaded and pre-processed the data, we can define the band set. So from the SCP menu band set, you can see here we have the previous band set defined for the clipping process. We can use this button to clear the previous band set. So yes. And now we are going to define a new band set. So click here this button to refresh the list of single bands loaded in QJS. Here you can see the converted bands with the prefix RT. We click this button to select all the bands and click the plus button to add the bands to the band set. Then, to set the very quickly the center web length, we select here Sentinel-2, and this is the band set that will be the input for the classification. Now we can go to SAP doc and create a training input. Here, in this tab training input, we click this button to create a new training input. We select the output file, for instance, training. This is a file with the SCP extension. This is a particular file which stores both the region of interest polygon and the spectral signatures. Next, we are going to the working toolbar here. The RGB options allows to create a, very quickly a color composite. So here we select 3, 2, 1. As you can see, a virtual bandset, which is a temporary file, is created to see a natural color composite of the image. We can also change the bands of the color composite, for instance 732. You should notice that these are the numbers of the order of the bands in the bandset. These are not the original names of the Sentinel-2 bands. And here we can see the first color composite with the near infrared band showing very clearly vegetation in red. So now that we have created the band set and the training input, we can create the region of interest with this button here. We can create a polygon. So left click for each vertex of the polygon here and right click to close the polygon here. You can see this uh, orange semi-transparent polygon is the temporary ROI. So in the SCP doc, we set the macro class name. So for instance, water and the class name, in this case, lake. Then we click this button to save the region of interest and calculate the spectral signature. Here, as you can see, the spectral signatures has been added to the ROI and signature list here. Of course, you can see here that the training input 
is a temporary file here. So this is uh, managed by SCP. So you just need to create ROIs using the SCP doc. So now we are going to create another ROI over the urban area here. This time we are going to use the region growing algorithm, this button here. With a simple left click in the map, you can see here a polygon is created. These are all the pixels very similar to the clicked pixel. The similarity is defined with these options here in the working toolbar distance. So we can change this value. And we can use this button to redo the region of interest. And as you can see, increasing the distance value, we have selected more pixels. You can use this button to show and hide the region of interest. So this is a temporary polygon, so we can create uh, many region of interest as we like. We can see that with this value, we have also selected some vegetation pixels here in red. So we reduce the distance value, for instance, 0.05 here, and redo the region of interest. And as you can see, less pixels are selected. So now we can save this ROI. So we change the macro class ID, for instance, to set the macro class name, built up, the class name, for instance, buildings. And then we click save to save the region of interest in the training input. As you noticed, the class ID is automatically increased by one every time you save a region of interest. So here we see the new ROI added to the ROI and signature list. You can see here that each region of interest is grouped by macro class in a tree list. You can notice the value over the cursor in the map. This represents the NDVI of the pixel so of course we need to create several ROIs, one for instance for vegetation here. Here we changed of course the macro class 3, the macro class name, vegetation, and the class name. And here, the third ROI of vegetation. You can see here, we are going to create a new region of interest of soil. So we change the macro class 4, the macro class name soil, and the class name, for instance, fields. And we click save. Now we are created for region of interest. So one important step is to assess the spectral signatures of ROIs. So we select all these ROIs and click this button to add the spectral signatures to the spectral signal plot. As you can see here, we have all the spectral signatures and of the region of interest that we collected. You can see here the line representing the mean value of the spectral signature and the transparent range representing the variance. You can check and uncheck the single spectral signatures. So this is, you can see here, uh, the mean spectral signature of vegetation These are the minimum and maximum values of the spectral signatures. We can assess the spectral distances between spectral signatures here with this button. You can see here the pairs of spectral signatures. So here you can see the spectral distances calculated with several algorithms. For instance, uh, Jeffrey Meltusita is uh, very good for assessing the spectral distance uh, between uh, 
signatures if we are using the maximum likelihood algorithm. Spectral angle is very good for spectral angle mapping and as you can see here these two spectral signatures, buildings and fields, are very similar for the spectral angle. As you can see highlighted in red, this is a very small angle, so probably there will be issues in the classification. We also have some plot options and we can also export the plot. After the creation of several regional interests, we can change the color, the colors that will be used in the classification raster. So double click on the color, we can select for instance a color for the macro class water. We can also change the color of single region of interest for classes. So after we have changed the colors of all the region of interest, here, we can perform the first classification preview. So classification previews are very useful to assess the results of a classification without running the classification of the whole image. So very quickly, using this button here, preview, with a left click on the image, here you can see we have created a classification preview, very small uh, raster, we have performed a minimum distance classification. We can see the color defined for the region of interest. If we go to SCP menu band processing classification here, we can see here that we have performed a preview for the input band set defined with the class ID. And we can change here the algorithm. For instance, we can perform a classification using spectral angle mapping. So we can perform another preview. So this time, this has been performed with the spectral angle mapping algorithm. We can also change the size of the preview here. So 500 pixels, a square of 500 pixel side. If we change the ID to be used, for instance, the macro class ID, we click this button here to redo the classification preview. And here, as you can see, you can recognize the colors of macro classes, water in blue, the top in red, and so on. After the creation of several previews, if we are satisfied with the results, we can perform the classification of the whole image. So we go here in the SAP menu, then processing classification. We check the options here to use macro class ID and the classification algorithm, in this case, spectral angle mapping. And then we click run and select the classification output name. You can see here the classification of the whole image. Here it is loaded in QJS. You can see the symbology that reflects the macro class ID colors. Here you can see built up classified in red, vegetation classified in green, water classified in blue, and soil classified in yellow. Of course, you can also recognize uh, classification errors here. For instance, this uh, soil is classified as built up. You can also see the border of the lake classified as built up. This is because of spectral similarity between uh, sand, soil and built up areas. You can see there are several classification errors in the image. So, so we should improve the classification by adding a new region of interest in order to reduce the errors in the image. And in this process, I recommend changing the color composite. Because with color composite, we can really see different materials at the ground. So for instance, here with this color composite 1032, we have added a short wavelength infrared band. And here we can see very different colors and very different types of soil. 
we can use these buttons here to change the stretching of the color composite. So we should repeat the process of creation of ROIs and improve the classification. So this was the first tutorial of the new version 7 of the semi-automatic classification plugin for QJS. Of course, you can read the user manual for further uh, details and I also invite you to contribute to the translation of the user manual to your language. For any comments or questions, please join the Facebook group. Thank you for watching.